We will continue with the second panel. We are behind, but the things that uh, we saw, I hope, were interesting for you. I was certainly impressed by what the Balkans do, and but the question is what uh, we do. And we will see it uh, in this panel. We will start with Gennady Kundarev, practically. Friends of the Earth uh, has initiated uh, what the Sofia municipality has uh, told us about and is very proud of. But sadly, they will not be able to personally tell us. Uh, we will just hear presentation. But Gennady will tell us why the initiative was started uh, in cooperation with Sofia municipality, with uh, Noviskar municipality, and what uh, is ahead. Thank you, Asia, for. Uh, hearing my request to to include to include me in this session because I I, I would have bored you. I had to react really quickly. I hope uh, we will not miss anything that Sofia municipality colleagues would have shared with you. This, uh, of course, will be in the next uh, presentation. How did we launch the pilot project and what lies ahead of us? I will try to outline a picture without going into great technical details or having to go into legislation uh, topic uh, too deeply. What I'm trying to describe are the basic things that uh, we try to include in the program with Asia in 2012. Uh, we have been we'll be fighting uh, for programs that we want to launch that uh, target the problem with uh, the uh, efficient uh, household uh, heating. And only in 2012, after so many years of uh, efforts, we decided to make a proposal to the uh, municipalities and national authorities. And the idea was uh, to outline a program, a path that uh, we, could, we can use, a ready-made path, so that we can uh, develop a program and make the work of the municipalities uh, on creating the architecture of uh, such deep measures easier. Where does the problem start? Hundreds of thousands of uh, households in Bulgaria uh, receive uh, energy uh, support. This is a very controversial measure. Of course, we cannot leave uh, the people in cold. We are a moderate continental country uh, with moderate continental climate. Uh, the winter months are very cold, and uh, densely populated uh, uh, cities like Sofia uh, see temperatures 20 below, uh, under the zero, and others are even colder, but certainly Sofia and Northern Bulgaria are greatly challenged in these uh, peak moments of uh, the heating. And the energy poverty issue, uh, in the energy poverty issue, Bulgaria ranks uh, first. These households uh, who receive uh, energy aid are about several hundred uh, thousand, and in the record, uh, it's in its peak, they have uh, reached uh, over 300,000. Last time, we counted uh, over 220,000, and I think uh, the last calculations uh, show that uh, the number is lower, but uh, still uh, energy aids are being paid, and the energy is not being used efficiently or the funds are being used uh, to buy wood and coal. And contrary to the idea to uh, to get a cleaner urban environment, after the last uh, census in Bulgaria, 58% uh, of the Bulgarian households, uh, this is according to the data from 2012, we have to wait another 10 years uh, to receive more uh, current information. But uh, back then, 58% of the Bulgarians uh, use uh, solid fuels to provide uh, heating. Uh, whether this percentage has gone uh, up or down, we cannot know at the moment. 40% of the population use uh, electric energy for heating. The average uh, percentage for Europe is 11%. 
that is um, not only Bulgaria, but I think it's a problem in on the Balkans, the energy that uh, should be the luxurious energy, what we should use uh, for household appliances that has a different role than the providing heating is becoming one of the greatest consumers of energy. And every time I, I take a look at the uh, non-isolated uh, energy audit of buildings, uh, non-isolated buildings, uh, about uh, it, the consumption, the energy consumption of these buildings is about 80%. The solid fuel as a problem in the currently is what uh, we are using. And these are, this is coal, including coal that is mined in illegal mines. I'm sure you have heard about the problems in the Pernik. There are certain small mines that uh, supply coal across the country without uh, reporting that, but without accounting for that. And the battle is to adopt some standards so that uh, we can use uh, more dry wood and uh, thus reduce the particulate matter. What we see is uh, freshly cut wood and sold, and I don't know how the households are uh, storing this, I've seen wood uh, outside, and then the households are trying to, to burn that uh, in the winter, which complicates the situation even further. Uh, nearly a half of the energy in the country is uh, from coal. We use one of the lowest quality coal in Europe, and you as environmental experts are quite, quite uh, aware of the problem, and many of you uh, have uh, developed plans and you have seen the energy in intensity of a megawatt of uh, consumed energy in the country. And you do understand that the trend is uh, to an energy transition if we want to provide a better quality of life of, uh, for the population. One of the trends in uh, future trends is that, uh, of course, there is no cheap energy. Uh, the renewable energy sources uh, are becoming the cheapest type of uh, energy source. And what we keep repeating is the energy efficiency is uh, a priority and the megawatts is uh, the cheapest energy in most cases. I will only switch here to a slide that uh, we have borrowed from the Plovdiv uh, Energy Agency. I have uh, shown this uh, slide many times. It shows the negative impact of uh, the different uh, fuels uh, on the air quality, in particular the particulate matter. And what you see is uh, the saturation of uh, uh, um, Uh, ni uh, nitro oxygen uh, with the lowest emissions and the local uh, locally is uh, the natural gas coal wood uh, for heating uh, have uh, uh, produced the highest emissions gazio and uh, wood pellets uh, give a significantly lower uh, emissions but they are still not a zero emissions we will come to the hierarchy of uh, the solutions, heating solutions, and the pilot program, which was uh, implemented uh, in Novi Skr, which relies on uh, pellet-based uh, uh, heaters. And why do we use uh, wooden pellets uh, rather than others? It's, it's because we are faced with uh, uh, the dilemma to preserve uh, the, uh, the environment. I am a little lost in the presentation, so we will go back to this uh, slide. In terms of uh, greenhouse uh, gases, the natural gas does not uh, produce that uh, lower emissions, although it's much lower than the coal. And as an organization, we are trying to promote an hierarchy that uh, has come to the 
opportunity to promote the use of uh, wooden pellets, although uh, they always come second when uh, we calculate uh, the, the scores uh, in terms of fuel. And they are not such a bad solution to the problem. Why did we insist on having problems, uh, uh, developing programs for energy efficiency? Energy efficiency uh, is uh, comes uh, first and foremost with uh, building renovations. And as my colleagues said, uh, um, my colleagues from the Western Balkans is uh, to target the uh, multi-apartment buildings and every uh, left that we invest, we will have greater effect. But uh, the urban areas, the the uh, family housings, and still are still faced with uh, the energy efficiency problems, and this creates a bad environment uh, and bad air quality, uh, bad uh, micro environment in the in the how these houses, and there is no program that uh, deals with this problem. Why is it so difficult uh, to uh, target the energy efficiency in this? Uh, houses because to uh, renovate, to insulate uh, one family building is uh, much more expensive than uh, multi-apartment building. It is not as easy to provide uh, investments for such type of renovations. And if uh, we had a program that would uh, renovate just one room in uh, energy poor families, then uh, you can uh, you will realize how many politicians would uh, actually undertake the task to uh, take the the inhabitants of this room out and uh, do the renovation. It turned out that uh, this is actually an easy solution and it's not, it, it's a good idea to start uh, replacing the heating, the heating appliances because this is not an, ex, uh, an expensive uh, project and what we have as an investment was and technological solution was uh, to invest in house in households um, the amount of about 2000 lives which is quite an affordable amount and uh, could target many households our uh, technological solution hierarchy where we have uh, central heating we are not even discussing that category because these uh, regions should uh, uh, keep using central heat heating. But uh, for the rest of the areas where uh, we are using uh, the uh, coal burning heaters, uh, the first solution is to replace it with uh, heaters uh, based on uh, biomass, such as the pellet uh, heaters, which uh, have lower uh, particulate matter emissions, 10 times lower emissions, to, to offer uh, inventor AC units uh, in places where there is no technological solution to replace the uh, previous uh, heating appliance. especially in households which uh, have used electric electric energy before or households where elderly people live and cannot uh, carry in and out uh, the uh, bags of coal. We can rely on uh, highly efficient uh, AC units and the market offers, uh, offers um, great solutions uh, for 1,500 lefts uh, of uh, A3 plus class and Every every watt in standard uh, conditions would uh, would be more efficient. And uh, as a last resort, uh, in uh, rural areas where there are power outages in the winter, and uh, an AC unit uh, can leave them in the cold, we suggested to use uh, heaters including uh, cooking stoves that uh, comply with uh, Eco-Design Directive and uh, 
with the insistence that if there is uh, uh, no proper place to store the wood uh, so that uh, they can uh, be dried for at least two years, to uh, build a program, uh, to, to use a program uh, to build uh, a shades for such wood. Some other specificities of the program we offered was to overcome the risk of uh, the stoves not being looked after in a good way or if uh, the beneficiaries die because uh, most of them are old people for just uh, for these stoves to remain in these holes without other people being able to benefit from it or the risk of people selling their stoves uh, even during the first uh, year and what we proposed for was for municipalities to retain ownership of these stoves and this was in the pilot program of Sofia municipality our proposal was for ownership to be retained for five years which is enough for for repayment of these uh, appliances through economies uh, that they provide what we had set in the pilot project was a three year term the way this has been legally defined was uh, through free lease hold. And there is such a thing in the Bulgarian legislation. Our legal advisors researched this. Unfortunately, under the new program environment, we learned that uh, the huge funding initially planned for over 50 million euro does not uh, provide for the municipality retaining ownership over the stoves it would have been better for municipalities to retain ownership we learned that uh, the heaters would be provided to beneficiaries as grants the project which uh, was at the pilot phase implemented by Sofia municipality we contacted Joanna Christo, the deputy mayor for environment. It turned out that uh, they had long thought about creating such a program. So uh, whenever we offered our initiative, it, this coincided with the intention of Sofia municipality. They, they set aside 70 million from the uh, 70,000 from the budget of Sofia municipality, which is enough for pellet stoves, which is enough for the stoves and for the guarantee maintenance for 30 households. So they chose Novi Iskr, district of Sofia. I need to admire the efforts of Sofia municipality in this region, this district, because initially we did not agree to have a concentration of these stoves in a given district. We rather um, initially wanted to have five or ten stoves distributed in different uh, districts covering different beneficiaries, for example, starting from young families or households with elderly people. But uh, later we were convinced that it's better to concentrate uh, this effort because Noviska district uh, did a good job popularizing this uh, scheme and uh, finding the people to participate and uh, exercising the monitoring and control. All tender procedures and documents for selection and uh, orders for this scheme were provided by Sofia Municipality last year to us and we uploaded it on the website of other association of municipal environmental experts. You are free to look at these or to use them in your own municipalities if you want to start similar programs. Things are going to develop Furthermore, with the LIFE project, which is going to start, large municipalities are very ambitious ambitious to participate in the operational program environment under Axis 5, which provides for funding for air quality. Other target groups, what we found while the pilot project was underway, was there are many rich families which are currently not stimulated to change their heating systems. 
I guess uh, everybody has seen advertisements for um, huge burners uh, with the text. These burners can burn everything. We often tend to accuse marginalized groups for burning plastics or tires, but in fact, in districts like Boyana and the other rich districts uh, around Sofia, we can see uh, houses with uh, heavy smoke. We found out that these installations can be transformed to use pellets or gas with an investment of 2,000 lev, which can partially be covered by a grant scheme or with a low interest or no interest uh, support scheme. This could stimulate these uh, households to turn to a more environmentally friendly heating style. Sorry for interrupting you, but as far as I remember from the presentation about Scopio's experience, they said that the price of these stoves meeting the eco-design uh, requirements was about 150 euro. Was this the price you mentioned? I'm trying to compare the amount that you have chosen to give us an example of 2,000 lever with the one mentioned in Skopje. The stoves provided by Sofia municipality are better uh, than those in the eco-design directive, which you honestly said that eco-design directive has very low thresholds. Municipalities which want to solve their air quality problems need to raise the bar with regard to their targets. The eco-design directive was adopted some time ago. The technical requirements were different. Uh, compromises had to be taken then. And now we have on the market uh, much more energy efficient uh, stoves with a better return on investment due to their higher efficiency. So my recommendation to municipalities is not to follow the eco-design directive, but to aim higher. Probably you paid attention to the Italian uh, speaker's presentation. Uh, if you remember, they have a category consisting of five categories, and the eco-design practice is in the middle three stars. So there are two higher categories than the middle one, the eco-design requirement when they are met. Uh, so the ones that were 110 euros on the slide that are uh, those are the boilers that are um, category one would be in Italy probably. So people are getting subsidies for those that are not even fulfilling the eco design directive. Yes, yes doing away with uh, the incentives, or if we have a reverse incentives, this is one of the first things to do. And this is true for small and big energy on the level of uh, household and on the big energy level. There is a recommendation to go beyond the subsidy for fossil fuels. I have missed one of the possible target groups, but uh, extremely poor households which don't fit any other category is one of the one of the curious uh, pieces of research that several groups are trying to carry out is to improve uh, the stoves for these we as an organization don't fully agree uh, because uh, these stoves are not certified and don't meet the eco design directive and could be do it yourself stoves we would abstain from promoting this uh, solution. There is a solution to this uh, issue. I don't want you to be left uh, with this uh, impression that these poor stoves are not certified, but uh, some of them could even have higher indicators, better indicators than the pallet uh, stoves. Um, the idea is to train people to make their own stoves if there is a workshop by a trainer, 
he could train uh, people on how to make their own stoves. We should continue working in this direction because marginalized groups will find it hard at one point to afford pellets, even if you provide them with pellet stoves. So probably people who... So pellet stoves have one advantage that they can work with branches. You can use branches fallen on the ground and uh, burn them. We are familiar with this practice of collecting wood from the forests. I forgot what I wanted to say, sorry. Another thing I would like to say is that the funding is available for municipalities, small and big. When I speak to municipality representatives, I keep hearing that they need arguments why such a program cannot be implemented rather than municipality representatives wanting to make things happen. Really, environment operational program will be open, but uh, this is, I get controversial information about how accessible this uh, measure is, but the environment operational program will target only huge municipalities and for which there are penalty procedures for the air quality, which have not provided their air quality management programs. So what do you call by rocket stove? You should check this online. Rocket stove has a special design, which is like you. Uh, one chamber provides additional burning of the gases, so it has a very high efficiency level with extremely low emissions. You should look it up online. This is an elementary system which, however, is very good for secondary burning of the flue gas because of another chamber. It was established by, it was founded by a, an Italian who who promoted it in the rural areas. There, are, There is a Bulgarian uh, producer, even a second one. One of them is certified with very high efficiency. So they can even be better than the pellet burning stoves. But uh, you need to load them more often, while pellet systems are automated and their maintenance is easier. But for poor households who can make a compromise and um, put uh, wood or burning material more often, it's worthwhile researching this possibility. Life program provides an opportunity, although not a 100% grant, provides an opportunity to fund such measures, and the problem will be the cough funding, but uh, uh, the life program will not discriminate against small municipalities. And there is another measure within this programming period with regard to the European funding. This is an operational program reducing growth. I believe that uh, there are about 10 million euros for uh, improving energy efficiency in, in single household uh, buildings. And this will be a financial instrument. Installations should not be changed. Okay, thank you. I will update my presentation before I share it with you. We have uh, future programming periods. When you participate in the programming, the next multi-annual financial framework will probably envisage a requirement for up to 25% allocation of the funds to be spent for things to do with climate preservation, something which is coming closer to the deadline is the reform in the energy aid. In 2018 we had the, an idea to restructure them. One part of them should uh, have gone for changing the installation and uh, the remaining part of the support would go for people to buy pellets. 
you'll see if it is cheaper or more expensive to use pellets in the pilot project by Ivan Popov. We keep fighting within our own organization. We know that uh, pellets are not the most optimal solution. Is this a transitional solution? Should we rely on them? I am of the opinion that they are part of the solution and, and they should form a part of the energy mix which should be promoted. They are not the only solution. There is no universal solution. But uh, more and more people unite around a plan for an energy system which should be able to utilize the best currently existing uh, solutions for preserving the climate so that we have access to clean energy. Of course, the first problem which needs to be solved is uh, storing the energy from renewables. The problems are with the batteries we use. More and more, the plans on the European stage are that we are heading for a system relying much more on a uh, special uh, system using electrolytes to take advantage of the extra energy gathered, a transition. Um, as a result of this process, uh, a part of this fuel will be further processed to methane. And then this uh, fuel could be used as a precursor for fuels in the plane industry in order to provide a transport where we cannot answer just with uh, electric mobility. For example, in the airspace, we cannot have electric planes. And storing these gases could be used for direct uh, burning and heating. So we can make a split within the system, you can see on the screen. This is something that uh, the European programs will head to, so we'd better take a look in this direction. Some of you may have read uh, the plan for energy and climate in Bulgaria. In the first draft of this plan, which was shared, we couldn't see an assessment of the effects of this plan. It seems that uh, we were not planning an exit from coal or using gas as a transition fuel, but everything that could be used as transition for gas or for extracting such fuels from our territory could be used. We cannot answer the goal of this plan, which is to follow the Paris Accord targets. This was it from me, and now we are turning to a video which represents the human side, human experience of the pilot project, and then we're going to turn to the results of our research. We conducted interviews with all 30 households which participated in this scheme. And we're going to share you the results. Ivalo is going to tell us the results. My name is Detelin Gurgiev. I've been living here since 1975. Until I received the stove, I was using wood as a heating, which was uh, typical for everyone, not just for me. After we heard about the program, the stove program, the future of the pellets is coming, and we decided that it will be best for us since we are too old to lift heavy things. And we decided it will be best for us to use pellets. We had the luck to receive one stove. We switched to pellets and we are very happy. I recommend, I recommend it to everyone. If they are not sure, they can come and see 
for themselves and benefit with uh, the source that gives source without uh, giving any problems. How much cubics of wood did you burn? Up to 10 cubics per season, which was also a lot of work because we had to move them in and out. Once you get the pallets inside, it's much easier. The heat is the same. It's not less. It heats well, and once you load it, it works for 24 hours. How much pellets did you use for this season? I use 100 uh, bags, let's say, one, once we started heating. Once we started heating, we have used uh, about 25 bags and 20, 20, 20, uh, 20 bags, 15 kilograms each is about 300 kilograms, which is uh, one ton and a half pellets uh, for comfortable heating compared to the up to 10 cubics of uh, wood. Yulka, you're how old? I am 83. What type of heating did you use? I used wood. And now you're using a pellet by stove. Are you happy with the stove? And would you recommend it to other people? To I recommend everyone, especially the young people, to get one of those pellet by stoves. Is it easier? to clean it, it's easier, it's convenient, comfortable, and it heats. I will not replace it for anything else. Thank you very much. It is much different than uh, my previous stove. What type of stove did you have before? Coal-based, coal burning. Oh, both uh, coal and uh, wood I used. I put uh, wood and then on top of it coal. Is it easier to use a pellet burning stove? Would you recommend other people? I recommend everyone to switch to a pellet uh, stove. It's much cleaner. There is no wood and coal in your yard. My name is Tuyan. Can we use it in, in this video? How do you think, what do you think of this stove? I used to use coal and wood, and now that uh, it's much easier to use a pellet burning stove because uh, you get the bag and that's it. It's environmentally friendly. How do you feel this year? I feel perfect. This, the, the temperature in the house is the same. Everything happens uh, quickly and easy and everything is fine. Thank you. Not everyone was uh, so comfortable in an in interview, and I'm not the best uh, interviewer, but uh, I will tell you to uh, very fun cases. We had a very pious woman, which uh, she also included our names in her daily prayers uh, for the stove. And an elderly man told us that when we put put uh, the the stove in, and I started uh, having a lot of rest, and I wondered how may, how how come I have so much uh, free time. And then I realized that uh, at that time, usually I would uh, cut wood in the in the backyard. Now that we saw that uh, inspiring video, you can uh, you can uh, broadcast it on many TV stations. And if there is a TV station with a cost, they will probably do it for free. Now. 
it also came to my mind are you lobbying for the use of uh, uh, pellet uh, burning stoves are you a lobby for the use of pellets because because these thoughts uh, must have come to many people who heard of your project of course and the only person of the lobby is me because we have a lot of uh, internal disputes in our organization what to promote what not to promote whether it's pellet stoves or something else this dispute will continue this is not the uh, the end of energy this is just a, a nice uh, transition the, the the nice jump in the, uh, to a better life uh, of the people the people who use uh, used to use coal and wood and uh, what the the speaker is not using a microphone i promised asia to prepare uh, more information my presentation uh, suffered the most uh, so because of all the information that I collected, uh, it is the power of the stoves is uh, eight kilowatts, and they are meant to uh, warm up just one room. Although, if uh, if there is if the household is smaller, then uh, uh, more rooms can be warm. Uh, these uh, stoves do not have water jackets and can be used uh, in families who receive uh, energy aids, and it provides heating for just one room. The stoves can be used for cooking, but uh, that would happen slow. But the producers do not recommend it because uh, if it's spilled over the stove, uh, this is not good for the stove. And most uh, people do not use it for cooking. There are more expensive uh, versions of uh, the pellet systems that uh, can be used for cooking. But it was not. Uh, included in this project. Now we will continue with Ivan Popov uh, from uh, Friends of the Earth, who will also tell us uh, about the figures uh, from uh, that uh, experiment. Just a few words. I am uh, a team uh, air at the lobby of the thermal pumps. Uh, the air team believes that uh, whenever we have the opportunity we should uh, switch to thermal pumps and of course in some cases this is not the best uh, best uh, version i believe that the, there is no uh, one recipe for all we cannot use uh, only pellet stoves or just thermal pumps but we should not uh, get overly excited about uh, pellet stoves and we should uh, take a look into other solutions. Before I start uh, with the survey, I would just want to tell, uh, tell Gennady. Uh, Gennady was very provocative uh, during the interviews. He was uh, directed them uh, during the interviews. Uh, we did not do that during the survey. Uh, this, we, they were not as uh, biased uh, on their, uh, while they were asking, uh, we were asking them the questions, but uh, when they were being interviewed, they were a little more stressing. Gennady was directing them. Y you seem like uh, you manipulated them. Of course, I'm joking. Uh, of course, the survey questions were consulted with uh, a, a sociologist so that the questions were the closest to the topic and the data will be uh, very objective uh, when I'm saying that because uh, I'm saying that because some of the questions were asked in the end so that we not uh, mislead them <coughs> uh, what uh, I want to uh, give you here is uh, something that I believe that will be very uh, useful to the municip uh, to the municipalities uh, it's something that we did uh, in the policy air quality policy it's a report uh, about uh, housing uh, heating and we try to uh, gain more experience from the other countries uh, on the regulations uh, adopted in other countries on uh, residential heating to re in order to reduce uh, the 
uh, pollution from residential heating. And we try to get a few uh, different approaches from the different countries so that we can see the pros and cons, and we use them in Bulgaria. This is a report that uh, was we were provoked to uh, draw up. It is related to the uh, chimney filters. Uh, as you know, there was uh, There was a trend uh, to put filters on uh, on chimneys, but most experts experienced in the system uh, realized that this is uh, not a solution for the Bulgarian solutions, and uh, chimney filters are being uh, used in uh, societies such as in Switzerland, where the chimney filter is the last resort measure, and the fuel system has been solved, uh, was the first thing that was solved. They use uh, high-quality fuel. And just as a last resort, uh, the rich societies put filters on their chimneys. I believe that there are still municipalities that are still considering um, chimney filters. And I recommend them to read the report because uh, this will be uh, funds uh, not well spent. Uh, this is uh, an expert report. This is not our own opinion. This has been drawn up uh, by... Uh, by experts with uh, long experience. And the last thing that I want to present to you is a uh, 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 report based on sociological survey uh, carried out in 2018. We received the results in October. And based on that report, we, we, we got a survey, a nationally representative survey that uh, gives us information uh, based on regions, but the representation is, uh, but Bulgaria is represented in that report. This is uh, valuable information regarding the information on uh, what type of uh, heating is being used uh, in the country, which cannot uh, replace the information from 2011. But uh, while we are waiting for the next analysis, this is a good, uh, this is the census, of course. I will finish soon. Our recommendation is if you're drawing up a, a program for replacement of heating, uh, every municipality should have a survey. This is not an expensive uh, method and it will give you valuable information what would be acceptable for the people and what uh, would not be acceptable. This is very important uh, information in our opinion uh, to to bring the success of a company. And since uh, we don't have much time, I will continue with uh, the results from the survey. We, we we plan to uh, publish a report. We will have the report ready within a month, and you can uh, uh, see the full analysis there. I have only taken a few key uh, facts from it. The survey was carried out uh, in, uh, in April. Uh, the graphics, I think, are not very visible. We apologize, we have a technical break. While we are having technical break, uh, you can keep working. Meanwhile, I want to say that uh, there are towns that have uh, developed thermal power plants where the heating, where the towns uh, use uh, central heating, and the towns absolutely forbid uh, the building of uh, buildings that do not use uh, central heating. Uh, building a house with a chimney or the use of uh, AC units is uh, is banned. Using central heating is mandatory, and no other buildings are approved. This is uh, a matter of policies, because they say we can control what is uh, burned in the central heating system, but we cannot control uh, any chimney. We do not want to have chimneys on the territory of the town. And if you do not uh, want to use our way, you're welcome to move to another town. So whoever is not pleased uh, with the use of central heating, they can move to another town. 
This is just an example of policies that some of the municipalities uh, are following uh, in terms of air quality. I apologize. Some of us are using windows, others are not, and mistakes uh, happen. We will start with more general questions that uh, survey whether the beneficiaries were happy with the program. We have uh, 30 uh, respondents. Some of them, uh, some of the uh, responses are less, which means that not everyone has uh, replied. Uh, here you see the 29 people uh, were happy with the program and just one was not. And in the more detailed uh, replies, you will actually see that uh, he was uh, happier and generally he was happy with the program. None of uh, the respondents said that uh, they would quit the program. Uh, we already said that uh, the program continues, uh, we have a three-year duration and no one will uh, quit the program. There are a little more detailed questions. Our first question was uh, if they were happy uh, with the work of the company that installed the uh, stoves. We have uh, three very happy and uh, 13 happy people, one uh, average uh, content and one unhappy. We have a very uh, good response uh, to the company's uh, services with very few exceptions. but uh, uh, many were unhappy with the quality of the product. And the one who was not happy, uh, his uh, uh, discontent came from uh, the fact that uh, the company had to come three times and replace uh, the, the uh, stove. None of them uh, was uh, concerned about the installation of the stove. Everything happened quickly and was done well. The company that did the installation uh, did their job well. In terms of convenience, whether the people were happy with having a pellet stove uh, compared to the previous stoves they had. You can see that nine people consider it uh, very convenient and two believe it's uh, not very happy, but uh, they used to use electricity, but even pellet stoves uh, require some maintenance which is why the respondent said that uh, it was a little less convenient. 18 people did not reply directly to the question, but uh, uh, to the more detailed questions, they have given positive answers, which for us, it means that uh, they're either uh, in either one of the categories, it's very convenient or not that convenient. Generally, you did, you did hear the interviews, uh, uh, they were happy because it's uh, more convenient, it's uh, not as difficult, it's not as heavy, and one of them said, you just push the button and it works. This is, uh, you set the temperature and the stove maintains the temperature. One of the uh, sub-questions is related to whether it's easier to uh, load the pellet system into the stove. 26 people said it was uh, much easier for them compared to before, and four of them was not uh, said that it was not as easy. Uh, one of those four used to use electricity. One said that generally it was uh, good but uh, the bags were only 15 kilograms heavy, uh, which was difficult for the lady who was uh, an elderly lady, but she found a solution to the problem. Uh, one said that the problem is not of uh, the more inconvenient uh, operation of the stove, but the technical problem, which caused problems with the work of the stove. One said that uh, it requires uh, uh, cleaning and it ruined his vacuum cleaner, but then it requires a, a vacuum cleaner with a filter. There are special uh, extras for the vacuum cleaners, which he didn't have such filter and that broke his vacuum cleaner, uh, which means that uh, 
the instructions uh, for the stove use need to be a little better. A question regarding the transportation and storing 28 people say it's uh, much it's uh, much easier. 23 it was a set uh, it was a five said it was easier and one said it was uh, more difficult because he used electricity. Generally we have 14 people that it was uh, very easy for them to find pallets because uh, that was one of the questions in our program whether the people that uh, whether the people will be able to find pallets a foe that replied the question said uh, uh, one said that uh, he could not uh, find them and 13 now said that the, the ones provided by the municipality were enough for the whole year the amount provided was uh, one ton and one hundred thousand the heating comfort you did see uh, a reply to one of the most uh, important questions about the heating comfort 15 people said it was much warmer in their home one said it was colder we will hear a little more information about that person later 13 people said that there was no change in the temperature or something else of these 13 12 said that uh, there was no change in the temperature but they did say that the maintenance of uh, of uh, regular temperature is much easier and they no longer have uh, cooler and uh, hotter periods uh, with this uh, stove. Only one person gave a negative answer to uh, to this question because he was working and he expected uh, that once he come back home from work, uh, the stove would uh, start uh, heating immediately. We guess that uh, it's a problem, something with instructions. We are not sure whether the person knew that uh, he can set his stove to start heating an hour before he comes back from or this is the only negative uh, comment that we had on uh, this question as for the beneficiaries cost we will have a deeper uh, in-depth analysis uh, on that uh, question because it all depends on uh, the uh, room area the housing area uh, whether the the doors uh, are often opened or closed and that's why uh, this is more sub, uh, subjective uh, question but we presented their subjective uh, opinion we asked them whether it's uh, cheaper or more expensive uh, for them and they said that two said that it's much cheaper 12 said it's cheaper six said that it's the same uh, cost five said it's much it's more expensive one said it's much more expensive and three could not answer I gave you I gave here a breakdown of those uh, that uh, thought it was more expensive three used wood and uh, he said that he had a very uh, efficient uh, uh, fireplace before and I'm not sure why the municipality decided that uh, his uh, uh, foreign, uh, that his uh, And uh, one said, calculated that uh, if he has to calculate uh, his uh, uh, his carrying around uh, of the pallets, uh, he would not uh, go back to coal. And one was combined on wood and uh, coal. And he said that it was a little more expensive than before. But if I include uh, the work on the cutting wood, the transportation wood, uh, certainly it won't be that uh, expensive this is what uh, people felt about the cost of uh, using pallets we asked them what uh, would uh, they recommend to the company which is uh, the contractor of the public tender many of them uh, were happy and what uh, they said uh, uh, we will see later they said that, that uh, many of the stoves had uh, were defective they also noted that two people said that uh, there was no maintenance during the uh, over the weekends although it was part of uh, the agreement uh, reached with the municipality because uh, when uh, the people rely 
on that uh, heating only. That means that they'll uh, stay in the cold until Monday, until, until the company starts uh, working again, which is uh, unacceptable. Because sometimes uh, it is uh, all about uh, telling people which buttons to push. Uh, another uh, serious problem is uh, the lack of instructions in Bulgarian, detailed instructions in Bulgarian. Anyone uh, who is doing that uh, should know that this is very important. All the comments that uh, we had was a problem uh, in the instructions that could not uh, They do not understand the instructions that uh, they received because the stoves were installed in the summer. And uh, when the winter comes, uh, then they face difficulties. Some of them didn't even know that there is a delayed uh, start of the stove, which means that the instructions have to be detailed. There are very many uh, technical problems with uh, the stoves and the fuel. Uh, Twelve people gave, neg uh, said, gave a negative comment uh, on the pallets. Another one uh, said that he had technical problems with uh, the stove itself, which is mostly uh, caused by by the fuel. Gennady checked, and it seems that the analysis says that the pellets were not uh, that uh, quality. It uh, the person said that uh, the high quality pellets were on top, the lower quality on the bottom which uh, told us that uh, probably uh, the company has used it to uh, to sell uh, their low quality pellets there were 16 problems with stoves uh, out of uh, the total of 30 some of them um, uh, one two three problems uh, as uh, the people that had uh, three problems uh, uh, Th th those that uh, had uh, three over three problems uh, uh, had to still uh, heat their homes, and the company provided some solution. Most uh, the most often problem was uh, the lighters, and the experts we consulted uh, were uh, told us that uh, lighters, uh, these lighters should uh, have a life cycle of at least several years, not just one season, and. Uh, uh, still, the people do not complain of the 60 lever for the lighter they had to pay because uh, the stove was uh, free of charge. And our last uh, slide was rec is recommendations for the municipality, which were made uh, mostly by the people. These are to use uh, higher quality pallets and stoves. People say that uh, they want uh, options for water jacket or air ducts so that uh, they can uh, uh, heat their homes. And uh, we should... Uh, consider uh, one stove with a little more complex uh, system, air duct system, and because most likely there will be people that would uh, buy such stoves and to ensure energy efficiencies in their homes because uh, people, as we saw in the, in the survey, the respondents had uh, heated uh, other rooms with uh, different uh, types of heaters. So if the people want to uh, pay a little more for the more expensive option, they can, uh, can do so and use the more expensive system. Our comments based on the survey and uh, the overall uh, view on the uh, stove program uh, in connection with uh, the, the defects and the pellets, the defective uh, stoves and pellets is uh, to uh, go through the warrants carefully and to give full warranty for the stoves because it will be uh, free of charge for the people and will involve the pe would uh, commit the company to provide higher quality stoves to have a higher quality higher criteria for the uh, contracted companies uh, penalty fees uh, for them and even if and by the way yes okay I will not be able to give you detailed information, but I would like to turn your attention to the fact that there are two types of thermal pumps, good inverter ACs, air-air thermal pumps. Let's not mention the ACs. 
I agree that they are uh, one type of thermal pump mechanism, but the thermal pumps which require digging in the ground have a higher initial investment. The price is up, depends on how big the house is, whether there is another system pre-built like uh, an existing uh, radiator system. The return on investment is good, but the downside of those which are buried in the earth is that they have low on, on uh, we spend less for electricity bill, but the initial investment is huge. We need an initial resource for the initial price. But otherwise, there is a good return on investment. So let's hear what Dennis would say. So the key is in the return on investment, and it is very good. Dennis, you may have something to say. Thinking my time. <laughs> anyway, no, the thing, the calculation we have is based on the experience from Croatia, which is uh, there is a Croatian fund that has funded replacement last year. And basically, the investment goes What up kind to of uh, thermal pumps? Uh, 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 Traditional. Look, there, there are, no, there are three types of thermal pumps. You can be uh, air water, water water, and, and uh, yeah. ground water. Um, yeah, air, air. But uh, the thing is that, as he said, the, the, the investment in the one where you dig the well is a bit higher than initially. But now even the prices of that went down, so it's not that high. And uh, in the return, the, the, the efficiency is much better because it does not depend on the air air temperature outside. The air air to water is the less efficient one, basically, because it varies, well, it follows the variation of the air. The investment goes between, let's say, six and six and a half uh, thousand euros. For what type of thermal pumps? For, for all type of thermal pumps, basically, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's very difficult to, to say exactly, but it varies, as I said, between, let's say, Six to seven thousand uh, euros. Sorry. Water ground. Yeah, water ground or air ground. I mean, it 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 varies on the capacity. I mean, on 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 the whole system. It varies also in the the things you have to do with the existing system because you're actually replacing the boiler of which is using coal with something else. So there are some possible some adjustments in the existing system you have in the house to be done. But as I said, it, the, the, the quality of the pumps is now, I think it goes one kilowatt to four. One kilowatt energy to four for thermal. In, let's say two years ago, it was one to one. So they're, they're improving the technology of that, and that's basically the future. Because that's something I forgot to say, and that's the highlight of my campaign, basically. You don't have to burn stuff to get warm. We don't have to constantly think that the only way to heat our houses is to burn something. You don't have to do it. It's more effective if you do it with electricity. Yeah, sorry. Yes, but electricity is produced by burning something. Uh, no, because that's again something which is within the energy transition, and that's the prosumer, yeah. prosumer. Uh, 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 future of the prosumers, which is producing and consuming the electricity. So in future, you'll have on your house solar panels or wind or whatever, some kind of renewable source, which is going to provide electricity for the heat pump, and then you'll be completely off the grid. And that's the future. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, would you like to add something? No? OK, thank you. You can pose any questions if you want to. We have time for two questions because we need to have another presentation. So take the time that you have to pose two questions. Which are the municipalities which can apply Burgas are the first to apply, Plovdiv probably will apply. Do you have some program progress and progress with the measures as well? Uh, 
It's too early. Our project was signed on the 30th of May, so we don't need to comment. It's too early. Which project are you referring to? The investment projects for substitution or rather applying measures to decrease the air pollution. So at this stage, it's too early to speak about this. Now under the LIFE project, mm, surveys are undergoing about the attitudes of people. We are preparing the documentation to announce the tender procedure for station supply. We're gathering information in the meantime, so it's too early to answer. Let's listen to the live presentation now. I'm going to delete some slides under the live presentation. Yesterday, I was in a situation in which the presenters from Sofia Municipality uh, couldn't come. We have a detailed uh, presentation from Sofia Municipality. You're going to get it uh, as part of the set of documents that we're going to share with you. And now I'm going to play you an interview with Silvia Gorandova, who is an expert under the LIFE program, and she's responsible for monitoring this project. I believe what she has to say is very well structured. She has a lot to say about the project and the participants. My name is Silvia Gorandova. I'm responsible for the monitoring of the implementation of the integrated uh, program for air quality. We are calling it, in short, air Clean Air Project. What I can say is that this is a wonderful, very ambitious initiative of Sofia Municipality. Together with uh, five municipality, we're implementing this project, Burgas, Rusa, Velikotornu, Starazgora, and Montana. They applied and were approved um, with their integrated air quality project. These uh, municipalities are in the list of uh, municipalities which have broken the regulations regarding the fine particular matter. So we're addressing a problem which is serious in Bulgaria. I know that uh, uh, penalty procedure has been initiated against Bulgaria by the European Commission with regard to air quality and with regard to the PM emissions. We have to say that this is the first integrated uh, project under life in Bulgaria. The European Commission is encouraging member states to design, develop such projects and to apply with them. The integrated projects are large-scale projects. They contribute to setting the parameters, implementing policies, in environmental sectors uh, that uh, the state is facing challenges with, like the air quality topic in Bulgaria, these projects have a higher value than traditional and small projects under the LIFE program. The total value is above 16 million euro, and we should know that only 60% of these amounts come f under the LIFE program. The remaining part of the funding is provided by the beneficiaries of the support these municipalities I mentioned. It's a long-term ambitious project. It has several phases. The first one is analytical for a year and a half. Analysis are expected to be done in order to focus in a better targeted way, uh, the support in order to overcome the air quality issues. In the second phase, we're going to test the substitution of the stoves in these municipalities. We're going to substitute the heaters in 5,000 households. We're speaking about households which still use coal and wood to 
heat their houses. They're going to be substituted with uh, newer, more environmentally friendly ways to heat their homes. The priority is uh, uh, them joining a central heating uh, company. It is acceptable to have pellet stoves, which uh, have uh, lower emissions than the traditional wood and coal stoves. It's a very delicate uh, moment when we speak about the participation of individuals and households because the project depends as much uh, on the municipalities, which are the beneficiaries under the project, and on the attitudes of the individuals and their desire to participate in this procedure. That is why an important element of the project is raising awareness on this very important topic among the population. Another important element of integrated projects is that they are focused and they are ambitious to contribute to the implementations of this important policies. <laughs> Within this project, you can see different measures for substitution of the heaters. But on top of that, there will be an analysis of the information necessary for drawing up municipal programs for better air quality, which programs would be of higher quality. We reviewed this. And this team, wow, it uh, drew up uh, this uh, better quality program. They were held by a team by the World Bank. They uh, made a survey. They made recommendations on improving some aspects of these programs, mainly uh, the quality and accuracy of the data input also the models used to reach to the definition of a concrete measures for overcoming the issue. Within this integrated uh, project under the LIFE program, it is already running, by the way. The project has started being implemented. We made an analysis of what information municipalities need in order to draw up quality programs. Uh, there will be a draft ordinance which will be proposed to the ministry, which will ob obligate the institutions who work with this data to provide the data to municipalities so that they can draw up efficient and quality air quality management programs. We're going to stop uh, the interview here because uh, this woman is speaking too slowly and we are running out of time. For those of you who would like to listen to the entire interview, we would allow them to do so after we finish uh, because we have some more work to do now. And this is uh, the extraordinary general meeting of our association we need to take a key decision which matters. So if you have any questions, let's hear them. Let's uh, have this discussion on the topic of heating stoves, air quality, what we're inputting as programs, what we want to have changed, in what uh, direction we would like uh, to see this change. Let's do this uh, within 10 minutes or so. And then let's carry out the extraordinary general meeting of our association. And afterwards, if you want, you can listen the, to this interview to the end. I'm putting an end here because there are six municipalities which are beneficiaries. For the remaining municipalities, what is leading to know is that such a program exists. Such a project 
could be of interest for other municipalities with air pollution problem. They could take advantage of the experience of the other municipalities who have already drawn up this project. So from the viewpoint of the fact that uh, the beneficiary municipalities are not many in this hall, we stopped the video before the end, but I will reiterate, you'll be able to see uh, the remaining part after the extraordinary general meeting. So let's take advantage of the presence of our colleagues from the Republic of North Macedonia, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, Ivalo and Gennady are here, so maybe it's better for us to have a discussion with them. You can pose the questions that you're interested in to them. So I open the floor for any questions. I can see new faces here. Good afternoon. Uh, let me stimulate uh, this discussion. Nikolai, how about you starting? Have you considered combining different options? The main focus is that we're speaking about a fan of measures which need uh, to be taken. We're not speaking for a single measure. I wasn't the best speaker because I had to go out of the hall from time to time. But have you considered combining uh, bigger systems? For example, one system to be used by several users or um, something to be used in bigger uh, blocks? The answer to this question has to do with the uh, low interest rate or no interest uh, loan scheme. The initial program targeted uh, households in extreme energy poverty. Of course, many other households need similar project and funding. Most of these measures, which have to do with renovation of homes and uh, better energy efficient uh, heating, in the worst case, these measures are repaid in six, eight years. In most often, the return is about four years. In most cases, we can have a uh, interest-free funding for uh, households so that with regular amounts from their budget they could live better life and save energy. I'd like to turn your attention to uh, what uh, Guido Lanzani showed from the Italian uh, experience with subsidizing, which uh, is through uh, tax incentives through lowering of the tax rates. So the state has its mechanisms through which to incentivize and encourage this, such policies. I don't want to focus more on the national program for energy efficiency of multifamily buildings, which would in practice be subordinated to the programs to do with air quality improvement. Although the two of them can work independently, but anyway, it is better to have an integrated approach. And I don't want to comment about this program because it's a long topic. And uh, it is a waste of resources on part of a poor country. But it's a long topic. Let's uh, go back to our guests and use the experience. I will go back to the thermal pumps again. If it uh, if it comes to if it comes down to uh, multifamily buildings, especially uh, the big buildings, the only effective, efficient uh, option is uh, thermal pump. Thermal pumps. If uh, all the families join, and this is a very good solution. As a matter of fact, I will look even further into the future because Western Europe uh, is using it a lot. I will try to translate to Bulgarian. This is uh, seasonal. Uh, seasonal solar storage uh, on in Earth. These are warm water collectors 
as we know them, but uh, they store the water in containers underground, which are being used in the winter as, uh, as a heater that provides heating to the heating systems. It usually uh, is combined with uh, gas systems or pellet systems. They, w they are being used in the winter, but uh, there is less uh, solar energy that's coming. These are usually huge containers that are installed un underground and store the heating. I expect uh, this to be introdu increasingly introduced in the next five or six years because they are very effective. The investment, it, it all comes down to investments, but uh, they bring uh, great returns. And there are also thermal power plants that are considering uh, replacing their system and combining their systems with uh, uh, solar, uh, solar or warm water systems. If uh, there is a, a th thermal power plant in the municipality, they can uh, combine it because, uh, as we know, uh, gas the, the gas uh, uh, produces less uh, uh, particulate matter. But uh, and if, we, if we continue working with uh, a gas, we will uh, we will have less uh, particulate matters. But then we will face other problems. So we have to consider all aspects uh, different uh, carefully. We should not rush to use uh, gas and uh, diversifying the energy power because then we will be faced with other problems because uh, uh, Sofia is uh, facing uh, uh, nitrogen oxide uh, higher levels. Gennady, uh, I will announce uh, two things quickly. I will be here for dinner. I will travel with Asia in the morning and I'll be available uh, for uh, questions in a more informal meeting. And the questions I cannot answer, I will uh, write them down and I will try to give you the answer uh, later. Another uh, thing, uh, since uh, this event is organized by the colleagues from uh, this uh, there will be another event uh, in uh, the beginning of October and the focus will be on regional projects, planned projects uh, related to energy efficiency. We hope that we will have uh, another such meeting uh, this year that uh, can share more interesting things. And I believe that Dennis will share the first results uh, of the program in Tosla. This is all I have to say. Maybe we will continue. <laughs> Colleagues, do you know any uh, miners? Have you ever talked to miners? Why am I working, uh, asking this question? Because uh, if you had asked them, they would probably tell you how uh, the deeper you go, the higher the temperature it is. We are not going to install thermal pumps uh, next, uh, uh, close to the Earth's core, but it is true that uh, the temperature under the surface is uh, um, constant, much more constant. And my question for Dennis is uh, how deep... Uh yep. Let's not... Uh, uh we are mixing things. So thermal pumps are actually not using the ge geothermal energy. They're basically using the constant temperature that is there. So the temperature, it's just, it's sort of a heat exchanger, a compressor which is exchanging heat and then returning uh, the, 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 the whatever you have, water which from which you took two degrees and heated your house it returns it underground or under the surface to this constant water and heat it for these two degrees. So that's so it's not actual geothermal uh, energy. 
Look, the thing is that you can actually dig, if you have a field, you can dig a trench in that field, put pipes there, and you have the water circulating and, and it's using, well, half a meter deep trench. And that's it, or a meter, whatever. I mean, you know, it can be done, or you just, uh, well, 10, 15 meters, whatever. Just like uh, we uh, put uh, water pipes in the ground to avoid uh, water freezing. Uh, thank you for making that clarification, because... Uh, Sometimes thermal pumps are discussed as... Uh, there will be translation now. Uh, it is good uh, that uh, you clarified that for the thermal pumps because... Uh, we often uh, say uh, how deep we have to drill, how expensive, uh, costly that is, and how that makes the thermal pumps uh, very uh, uh, high costly and... Uh, un not well not well used um, thank you for this clarification because uh, it's good to dispel the mythology sometimes uh, it is uh, it is not uh, uh, about the cost but uh, the place where they they have to be uh, installed uh, I lived on a street uh, which had uh, technical difficulty to install the thermal pumps because there was a water pipe there. It is not about digging. The digging itself is not that costly, but uh, the, the place might be a bigger problem. The starting point that uh, Nikolai gave for the uh, about the uh, multifamily buildings and uh, searching for uh, common solutions is very good. And we said that uh, thermal pumps might be the best solution for them. This might be the best uh, solution for the condominium. You will have a uh, seasonal fluctuation because you are taking energy for a completely different environment. And if uh, the temperature is between 0 and 12 degrees, uh, that will be an effective system. But uh, the temperature outside is uh, minus 20, and you're trying to achieve the uh, energy, the temperature to uh, heat your home, the, the, it's, uh, the capacity of the system will be much lower. You will have seasonal peaks, and in the coldest winters, having such heating system will be very expensive. Well, uh, the thermal pumps is based on drilling. You will have uh, constant temperature levels underground. Um, my question is actually about the cases where you cannot drill. If you replace uh, the system with such a thermal pump, this is uh, a very highly efficient uh, um, heating appliance. Then, and if you're replacing it, uh, if you're replacing uh, just the stove, this will be much efficient system. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions? Our Macedonian guest. Uh, was asked very few questions. Do you have any specific results from that uh, program? Not yet. Uh, so the program implementation is starting this year. So we are now uh, collecting finances to implement the program. Some of the uh, legislation changes are in the procedure. So the subsidies and the other more specific measures will start probably in October, November. Yes. Just to add one thing, I mean, we are discussing here pallets, thermal pumps, this and that. There is one measure which has results for sure, and that's insulation of the house. So if you don't know what to do, at least invest in proper insulation. Because we had projects where we reduced, let's say, 50% of the coal used just by in insulating the house. So instead of 10 tons, you burn 5 tons. So that's anyway, for any measure, you need that as, as a starting point. So first installation and then decide which capacity of the stove you are going to install and which type. And that's it. In addition to, uh, to that, I will add that uh, you can achieve a 30% reduction of the energy cost if you just uh, change your behavior. That is, if you have the 
a proper way of thinking that uh, spares uh, energy resources, you will achieve 30 differences, which can be improved by research. Sometimes so we don't even need investments to reduce, to reduce our energy costs, but of course, with, it's best with, to have investments. And many times we have, we have uh, wondered uh, where to start uh, when it comes down to uh, house, housing insulation. The, the worst cost of uh, energy comes uh, in, in schools, for example, comes from the windows over there is uh, energy uh, heating energy loss uh, up to 50 percent and it starts with the windows we can start with changing the window framing and i will also mention something else for those uh, who who are part of uh, the energy efficiency uh, eco energy uh, system for those uh, they are aware of that information for those that are not uh, in effect uh, proposed a program several times that would improve the energy efficiency uh, of uh, the residential homes step by step and they focus on the fact that if uh, people in the multi-family building replaced individually their window framing using uh, some type of uh, fund uh, which might have uh, partial co-funding, then these people can be allowed to apply for the next step, which is the building installation, which is the most uh, difficult uh, part, which cannot be uh, done by then. If, uh, if People can individually change their window framing, but it, it's much more difficult uh, to insulate y only your uh, part of the building of your apartment. This partial uh, thermal insulation is inefficient for these apartments. They do not uh, benefit from what uh, they would benefit if their neighbors had not done the same. So you can start thinking that why you don't have to follow the programs that, uh, that are developed by the state. You can uh, start your own programs. You can encourage uh, building insulation. As, of course, if the building is, uh, is uh, technically well, because if the building is falling apart, that would not work. But if the people were able to replace their window framing, then you can provide some assistance, uh, financial assistance in insulating the building because this is one of uh, the high cost. And, and you, you know that uh, materials and labor uh, ratio is 50 by 50, but there are technical problems that can be solved best if, it's, if it applies to the whole building. This is the, the right approach. And this step-by-step -step approach uh, can be promoted by the municipal programs, and you can finance some part of the program and provide some funding. The national program had spoiled us because people got used to receiving 100% financing for multifamily uh, buildings that, uh, that are owned by uh, individual people and every all that is being paid uh, through the taxpayers taxes this is uh, not a grant this is just the loan two billion loan and they are going to take more for the same thing and because uh, each one of you here represents a municipality you know how things are happening there but this is uh, another topic of discussion I'm sorry I started it Do you have any other questions? Would you like to share anything? To share your opinions on the programs and issues? If not,